This video explains how to convert a date to a Julian day using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the example date that we can create with line two of the code. So after running this line of code, a new data object called my date is appearing at the top right. And we can print this date to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see that our example date is the 15th of March, 2023. Now let's assume that we want to convert this date object to a Julian day. Then we can apply the S POSIX LT function, as you can see in line five of the code. Within this function, we need to specify the name of our date. So in this case, our date is called my date. And then we need to use the dollar operator to extract the Julian day from this date. I'm also storing the output of this function in a new data object that I'm calling my Julian one. So after running line five of the code, you can see that a new data object is appearing at the top right, which is called my Julian one. And we can print the content of this data object by running line six of the code. And then you can see that the value 73 is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And this value is the Julian day that corresponds to our date object. Now there are different alternatives on how to return a Julian day based on a date. And in the second example of this tutorial, I want to show you how to use the format function to convert a date object into a Julian day. And in order to do that, we need to specify the name of our date object once again within the format function. And then we need to specify percentage sign J within quotes. Once again, I'm storing the output of this function in a new data object that I'm calling my Julian2. So after running line eight of this code, this new data object is appearing at the top right. And we can also print the data object to the RStudio console by running line nine of the code. And then you can see that the value 74 is returned. And you might already notice two differences between the output of the S POSIX LT and the format functions. So the first difference is that the value 74 is returned instead of the value 73. And the reason for that is that the S POSIX LT function is starting to count at the value zero and the format function is starting to count at the value one. So for that reason, the output of the format function is one number higher than the output of the S POSIX LT function. The second difference between the two functions is that the S POSIX LT function returns a numeric value and the format function returns a character string. So depending on your specific needs, you might prefer to use the S POSIX LT function or the format function. However, I want to show you a third alternative, which is based on the Lubridate package. And for this, we first need to install and load the Lubridate package, as you can see in lines 11 and 12 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 12 of the code. And after running this line of code, we can use the YDAY function of the package. And within this function, we simply need to specify the name of our date. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling my Julian 3. So after running line 14 of the code, this data object is appearing at the top right and we can print it by running line 15 of the code. And then you can see that once again, the value 74 is returned. However, this time, this value is returned as a numeric value. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. 
Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.